Hi there. A little while ago, I did a quick video on installing um, the Raspberry Pi Basic OS using Raspbian, and it's proven to be quite popular. Now, since then, I've got myself a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, and it came with um, an, a Noobs SD card ready to roll. I haven't tried it yet, so I thought I would video uh, the process of installing this one. And the difference is that this video, I'm going to install the XMBC server and see what it takes to get it up and running. I've got a TV screen here. It's a Samsung that is capable of taking commands over the um, HDMI cable and interfacing into the Raspberry Pi. So we'll also have a quick look to see how well that integrates because if it works well enough, uh, might be able to use the remote control that came with the TV to turn on and off the Raspberry Pi and potentially change channels and things as well within the um, XMBC software. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, if you're going to do a new install for a Raspberry Pi, uh, whether it be the B or the B+, uh, and you don't have the SD card that came with the Raspberry Pi, then you can easily download Noob yourself. Just go to the raspberrypi.org slash downloads page, and you'll see right at the top of the page is the Noobs, and you just click on Noobs, download zip file, and just basically uh, save it to your downloads folder or wherever you want to save your, where you prefer to save your downloads to. Hit save, and it'll take a few minutes to download. Once it's downloaded, uh, you can open up the file and copy it to your SD card. So we'll just give this a couple of minutes and we'll be right back as soon as it's finished downloading. While we're waiting for that to download, um, this is the standard Noobs card that comes with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it has the official little Raspberry Pi logo on the card and everything. In fact, let me just pull it out and I'll show you. That's the official card. It's actually a micro SD card that's in here. So it will work with both the Raspberry Pi B and the B plus, where the B plus they went down to a micro SD slot. Now the one thing you notice right off the bat is that it's actually readable by Windows. The uh, Noob software, the way it's been set up, is such that you can very easily write it by just doing a file copy. And once the zip file is finished, we'll open that and you'll see what I mean. Um, but it also allows you to redo the um, image at any time when you put the SD card back into the computer. You've got the ability to reinstall effectively between XMBC. Uh, Raspbian or one of the other supported operating systems. So what you do is you would normally just copy this straight to the SD card. Uh, this one's already on the card, like I said, and then you just put it into the Raspberry Pi and uh, boot up and follow the instruction that will show up on the screen. Still waiting for it to finish downloading, but while we're waiting, I just wanted to point out that if you are going to load your own card with the downloaded version, you need to make sure you format the SD card properly. And one of the tools that's recommended to do this is the SD Association's uh, SD Formatter and the current version being 4.0. It's available for Windows and for Mac, and you can just download it from the uh, website www.sdcard.org slash download slash formatter underscore four. Um, I'll put a link into the um, video and also link it separately as part of the YouTube information. Um, but make sure you download this and use it to uh, format the SD card. So I'm just going to do that actually now uh, while I'm waiting because I'm going to make a copy of my existing Noobs card and also I'll be writing this version when it comes down. The one thing I noticed about the version that's currently coming down is it is new as of the 24th of December 2014. So it's only a few days old. And the SD card that came with my Raspberry Pi, uh, it's a few months old. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this to finish downloading and I'm going to copy this one onto the SD card instead of the one that came with it. That way I've got the latest version of everything. So the SD formatter is here. It's the uh, it's what it looks like when you bring it up. And all you need to do is plug in your SD card into your SD card slot on your computer. Make sure you pick the right drive letter. And I've only got one SD card plugged in, so it's already picked drive G for me. It's a 16 gig SD card, but of course it doesn't show you all of that. It's only showing that I've got 14.9 gig available. That's one of the marketing things that lets people think they're getting more than they actually are. But anyway, you also need to go into options and turn on the format size adjustments so that you maximize the size available for everything on the SD card as well. Once you've done that, all you have to do is click on format, say okay, 
and OK again, and it'll go away very quickly, format the drive. As you can see here, the total space is 14.9 gig. But we've done that. The format of the card is now done, as you can see, really, really quick. So let's just exit from there. I've uh, got a few more minutes to wait for the download to finish. It's uh, quite a big file, and it's at 82%. So we'll be right back when it's done, ready to copy onto the uh, SD card. OK, the uh, file is now downloaded, so I'll just open it up. And as you can see, it has the basic same file list as the uh, one that came with the card, but these are going to be a little bit more updated in some areas. So anyway, the next thing is to copy it onto my uh, previously formatted SD card here that I have. So let me just plug that in, and we'll uh, go ahead and format it. And sorry, we'll go ahead and copy the files to it. All right, so my card is sitting on disk drive G here, so I'm just going to copy all the files, just highlight them, and literally just drag them onto G, let go, and wait for them to copy across. So this is just going to take a, probably just a couple of minutes, so we'll come back when it's done. All right, so it just took a couple of minutes. It's now done. We will now um, pull this out of my computer and plug it into the Raspberry Pi and power up, see what we get. This is the Raspberry Pi B+, and as you can see, a little bit different arrangement from the uh, previous models. We have an extended connector here. The um, audio out output inputs have been removed. You've just got the one jack, which includes video and audio here now. You've got your camera connector, your LCD screen connector, and you've got your HDMI output, and you have a micro SD card now for the power in. Uh, we also have two LEDs on the side here. One of them is for power, which is the one nearest the corner. And the other one is for activity of the SD card. So if I just plug this in right now while you're watching, you'll see things will light up. But I'll quickly switch the screen across to my um, TV monitor. All right, I haven't plugged this in just yet. I've just um, added a uh, dongle for my keyboard, which is this one. Came for it's a logic, standard cheapo Logitech keyboard. Uh, it's uh, only about twenty odd dollars, but it works just fine for the Raspberry Pi. And no additional drives or anything else like that that needs to be loaded. Um, also, this top one is a standard uh, little Wi-Fi dongle, and the one underneath here is for connection to my mouse for the uh, Raspberry Pi as well. So that's just a standard Logitech mouse. Again, works just fine. So now we're ready to power everything up. All right, so I'm going to quickly power this up so you can see the power light come on. And you will also note that the activity light for the SD card will come on there. OK, so on this side, you can now see the, the power light. The, so it's now the SD card has started to be active. And if I move up to my screen, so now what we have on here is the uh, Noob software has installed. All right, so we have uh, three options available to us here. We've got uh, Raspbian, uh, Raspbian Boot to Scratch, and data partition. OK, so the one thing that quickly became apparent is that without a network connection, the new version of Noobs only includes Raspbian, which is what's shown here. Um, Raspbian to scratch, or just Raspbian on its own, or just setting up a data partition. So you have to have some kind of network connection. Now, because we don't have an OS loaded yet, um, you need to make it the hard connection. So you have to plug a cable into the Ethernet port, which I just did. And there you can see immediately it uh, established an internet connection and provided the other options. Because there isn't um, an OS up and running, um, there's limited driver capability. So the Wi-Fi dongle had not uh, been detected. So plugged in the network adapter, and here's our options. Now, the one we want, obviously, is the RAS MBC, which is an XMBC media center distribution for the Raspberry Pi. That's the one we're going to go for. Um, so you just go down. You see the other ones you got, Pedora, RISC OS X. Arch, Open Alec, um, and the Raspbian. So we're doing the Raspbian, Rasp MBC. So we just select that, uh, and then just click on Install. Uh, you get a warning about the fact that everything on the SD card will be overwritten, uh, including any OSs that are not already installed. All right. Which, because this is coming off the network, we don't care. We just say yes. I also remember we have this on our uh, Windows PC hard drive, so we can always go back to it and create another one if we need to. So we just say yes, wait for it to start installing. Now it's going to be um, creating the file system and everything else. One of the things that just occurred to me is that this is downloading um, off the internet as well at the same time as installing it. So it will take a little longer than what Noobs used to be where it was loaded on the local Noobs SD card. So I'll 
bring it back once we're near a completion. After a couple of minutes, we're about 66%, 67% through, which is great. Okay, we're at 98%, almost done. So we'll see what happens once that's uh, finished doing its install. Probably going to require a reboot. Uh, the other thing while we're just waiting for this thing is make sure you do have the right uh, language settings and keyboard setting uh, at the bottom here. So it was set to a GB keyboard before I just flipped it to US while I was waiting. So we're now at 100%. As I said, never done this before. So this is as new to me as it is to you seeing it if you haven't done it before either. And there we go. OS successfully installed. Click OK to continue. So we'll click that. Now it's probably going to do a quick reboot and come back up again. So you got the big Raspberry Pi lo Rasp XMBC logo there. Lots of activity on the uh, SD card light. So if you look in the bottom left hand corner, um, one of the things it's just saying down there, I don't know if you can read it on this screen, if you're in high def you probably can, um, is it says it's just added user Pi. So obviously one of the logons is going to be Pi. Probably the same for Raspberry, where you log on with a user Pi and the password will be Raspberry. It's like another reboot, so it's busy doing its setup still. Still doing a bunch of initialization. I guess even though it's uh, freshly downloaded from the internet for that install, it's still got some updates to put in. 66% done. What I like about this is that there's uh, very little user interaction required to get all of this done. You basically just uh, answered just a couple of questions. What's the OS do you want? What keyboard do you want? What language are you using? Everything else so far has all been automatic. Another reboot, I guess. And it looks like that is it. As far as the basic install is concerned, you seem to be up and running. And it sounds like the sound is working as well. So I've got my local internal network IP 192.168.1.226. And uh, now it's asking me for some language selection. So, of course, I will be selecting uh, English language right here. It seems to still be busy with the SD card. So we'll give it a couple more minutes just to make sure nothing else is going to be getting prompted before we start digging into actually trying to use the uh, XMBC. Just messing with the keyboard right now just to see what else um, there may be that pops up. So we've got uh, menu options, system, programs, music, videos, and pictures. And I'm just going to try something with my um, remote control. This is one for the TV. Um, I know that, uh, oh, there you go. I'm actually using the remote control and on the TV and it is obviously communicating directly with the Raspberry Pi. I haven't done anything to set this up so that's pretty impressive that it's picked up that automatically. This is the first time I'm running the add-ins for videos so we'll see what we can find in here. No add-ins currently there so I'm saying get more. Probably going to go out onto the internet and try and find some. There we go. These look like a whole bunch of TV stations and things. Oh, recognize that one. Got to have that. These may be YouTube uh, channels. So let's just pick EEV blog for one. One of my favorite watching. So this is really cool. It's automatically picked up on my remote control. It's got the sound on the TV. Um, picked up on my network, no problems. I haven't tried it with the Wi-Fi adapter yet. Um, I'm not going to go through everything here because, as I say, this is about setting it up, not necessarily um, showing you how to use it. That's a whole probably different video. I will have to go and uh, play with this for a while and come back and do another video on actually using XMBC. I just wanted to see how easy it was to get it installed and up and running. And obviously, you know, looking at this, it's pretty easy. System, one of the things I want to just check in here is the Wi-Fi settings, if it's included. Um, because obviously I don't want to have a network connection. I want to just use the uh, Wi-Fi network that's in my house. I think, um, I think that's pretty much enough to demonstrate the fact that this thing is pretty easy to set up. I'm going to cut out a bit of the playing time there because I want to keep the video fairly short if I can. And um, I'll get back to you as far as using the XMBC with a separate video.